problem, right? No, 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 I'm fine. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. So I think we can start within uh, three minutes. It's, it's already 6 4 in UAE. Yeah, sure. We don't want to, yeah, because already mm -hmm. we have like seven, yeah. seven people on board. It's... Okay. So, What's so your average? Generally, you have people. I'm okay. Uh, average is like uh, 20. Uh, one, once, it reached, okay. uh, once it reached 92, it depends upon the speaker actually. If the speaker is like okay. uh, so much popular and uh, uh, among the groups and uh, uh, for example, we had uh, Mr. Ajit, if you know, uh, Mr. Ajit, uh, uh, he came to the show and almost 90, 95 people were there on uh, the board. What's, what's his full name? Ajit? Uh, Ajit Vidyadharan. Vidyadharan, yes. Ajit Vidyadharan. He's a coach as well. Okay. Was but it in the time, recent past? Yes, yes. Why? Because uh, the influence was carried forward from Empowerment Talks. Yeah. Uh -huh. He recently got connected with 5M Club Empowerment Talks and then he came into this show to deliver his speech. So the okay. fraternity was carried away. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You have to do a second session to uh, gather your crowd. <laughs> <laughs> No, of course, I had a sabbatical for almost six months between moving out from uh, Dubai and settling down here. Oh, it's tough. Yeah. So it's always out of sight, it's out of mind. Yeah. Yeah, and once you lose the uh, flow and it's very tough to regain back also, especially with the audience level. People are expecting yeah, even, from us a lot. Yeah, the same thing happened even with my Toastmastering. Now, I'm not into Toastmastering because I, I still have to find the right club. And it's not only doing an online meeting with those masters. I have to see it hopefully like six to eight months down the line when online meetings, uh, the offline meetings would start. Mm -hmm. So the proximity, the timings and so many factors are involved. Like today there's a Toastmaster meeting, but then when they meet every Saturday evening, it gets to be a challenge to, you know, from your social life to get mm -hmm. on to Toastmastering. Okay. I'm quite faithful, but still. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so let's start, right? I think it's good to go. Yep. Anil, we can start? Yeah, I think we can. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi, Sushma. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you, Gangadharji? Very good. Very good. Seeing As you after a long telling... time. Last I saw you was on Empowerment Talks and before that, DJ. That was, must have been in the month of February or March. No, Empowerment Talks was not that old, right? It was. Somewhere close to, I think. So. Oh my God. So much. So much. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't gone in front for quite some time, as I said, because I was still settling down. So where did you so, move to? I'm in Bangalore. I'm stationed out of Bangalore at this point in time. Okay. Great. great. Good evening, everybody in the room. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Jason, keep it. Good ready. evening, Sushma. Full screen. Hi, Madhvi. Hi, Mohammad. Yes, good Hello, evening. Hi, Anil. Hello, everyone. Good Hi. evening. Good evening. So, let's start. Sushma, are you good sure, to sure. host? Uh, no, I will. I'm. I have my uh, training, which okay, will good. start in some time. So, Thank I'll start. You. Sure, please. Okay. Welcome to the 31st webinar, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, 6 p.m. UA time, 7.30 Indian time. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for joining uh, from the various parts of the world. Mr. Gangadhar Krishna is with me, uh, with us uh, live uh, from India. And uh, uh, just to brief about the networking and learning group, uh, it's been like uh, one and a half years, two years now uh, on the journey of uh, continuous uh, supporting the community on education and learning, as well as networking. So uh, this would be our uh, 31st webinar as such, um, because after the COVID uh, started, we switched on to online networking. Before it was face-to-face -face networking, we had in uh, in-person relationship with people, but uh, now it's become difficult. And almost uh, one year now, we have been doing these webinars on each Saturdays. Before it was 4 p.m. Now it's been uh, shifted to 6 p.m. to draw more audiences. I think audiences are more comfortable with this time. Uh, thank you again for the registration uh, for uh, the 31st webinar. Uh, and uh, as we said, uh, 
uh, it was started by uh, these two individual uh, between uh, 2008 uh, december to 2000 uh, sorry 2018 december and uh, sushma uh, sushma priju she is an hr professional background and um, she also uh, is employed with one of the great firms in uh, dubai as an hr uh, person and myself i am working for a government institution here in sharja uh two, there are two major pillars of nlg Ms. mr anil konuku and takyudin uh, te parambil both are uh, professionals who have been backing up uh, backing our uh, ideas uh, sharing our strategies and uh, more focused on how to build nlg to the next level so that's uh, these uh, two great gentlemen have been helping us on the journey uh, there are three mission for uh, the networking and learning group uh, to network to learn to share knowledge so Uh, there is no financial obligations or there is no financial transactions involved in this this is free education free networking and free learning so that's what we are focused on uh, you can connect with us over different uh, channels like uh, facebook linkedin or you can whatsapp me also directly to get connected with us uh, to you can come also online for sharing your views or share, sharing your feedbacks and uh, being being a speaker uh, on the next coming sessions Uh, there are some ground rules to follow as always uh, please mute your audio whenever if you require uh, any suggestion or feedback just raise your hands uh, i will unmute you use chat box for any comments uh, questions will be addressed at the end of the q uh, the q and a session you may take notes or screenshots uh, as and when you require so coming back to today's speaker uh, mr ganga the krishna is a great uh, coach uh, specialized in customer service uh, and uh, he would be taking and uh, introducing him on uh, Uh, greater aspect in the coming uh, sessions uh, so that's that's uh, uh, also we have mr ramanath venkataraman for the next uh, session if you have been uh, associated with us uh, just follow us uh, on whatsapp and uh, linkedin i would be sharing the links for the next uh, next section also so over to you mr gangadhar all the, all, the, all the stage is yours all the best all right I got the screen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can everybody see the screen? Can they see me? And they can. Can you hear me? These are three questions. If it's yes to all of them, you may give me a thumbs up through your reactions at the bottom that you'll be having in your uh, screen. I Or can you see you. Thumbs up. I can see you I can hear you everything is visible. Okay fantastic. Yeah. There are lots of thumbs up coming. Oh good. I can just see one Anil's now right now. Uh I get to see get a this of all the screens. I'm not able to see all. Ah okay now it's better. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, good evening to each and every one who has taken the trouble to come here and attend this session on time. this is a very important aspect i feel what are we talking today we're talking about identifying the sole enemy stopping you from progress often we think that we have challenges every day every other day every minute of the day and sometimes you wonder you know that they are becoming an impediment for us in our progress we at that point in time the spur of the moment start looking at them as oh my god why is this happening to me i'm having an obstacle you may consider them as an enemy something that you don't want but in retrospection you feel that maybe there was a reason for it and you had to do something to get over it and move on but this one enemy who's there with you all along we will talk about that in time to come but before i do that what i would love to do is i would like to take you back to my journey and where i had faced various enemies or so i thought they were until i actually identified the sole enemy and saw how i need to uh make friends and make sure that the enemy doesn't harm me and i don't harm and you know we go on a peaceful uh, journey ahead so where do we begin okay 
My career has been pretty kaleidoscopic in the sense when I started working in the year 1990, 1991, no, 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 earlier than that, 86, you might say, I started in the travel and tourism industry. I was working for a small bucket shop travel agency. I moved on to working for Diners World Travel. I was handling their sales. I was handling some good accounts like Citibank and a couple of others. And uh, I thought travel and tourism is, I mean, travel agencies was not the place I want to settle down in. I want to join an airline. From the point of, let's say, the glamour aspect or from the point of what you would learn more or how much you can earn more and the growth. So I was hell bent. And I joined Air Canada in the year 19. 87. Air Canada was a fabulous stint, I might say. I learned so much there. A great career to work. A lovely place. We had a good group of people with us. But many a times, all that is so nice and hunky-dory comes to an end, abrupt end. It's not only in the Middle East and in Dubai, I have faced it already in Air Canada. So I can tell you for sure that it's there everywhere. And it's not today that I faced this, as I told you, this was in 1991. We always have interline agreements between Air India, which is a national carrier and Air Canada. So we have an yearly interline agreement. We also have to report to the Canadian office and when we were may having very good passenger traffic, our revenues were dropping. This is because the rate of exchange was tilting more in favor of the Canadian dollar than the Indian rupee. Anyway, the Crown Corporation, which is a Canada in Canada, thought it is not viable to have a flight moving in from London to Bombay to Singapore. So they canceled five stations worldwide. That was Bombay, Singapore, and three European stations. And to add to my woes or enemies, you might call it, I was fortunate enough, my daughter was born just about then, in September, and this I heard in November. So it just came, everything came crumbling down. I said, what the hell is happening? Because the last flight out would have been in, on 28th of Jan, the following year. And that was the same time Kuwait uh, attacked, or Iran attacked Kuwait, Saddam Hussein's uh, troops. So most of the carriers were not flying over the Middle East. In fact, they were taking different flying routes. Most of the carriers were not doing any recruitment. And here I was happy that I was working for Canada and everything came shattering down. I started a family. Now what? Well, I had a sister who lives in Dubai and she said, listen, forget looking, in, uh, looking for a job in Bombay. Why don't we come to Dubai? Let's see what happens. It definitely looked very attractive, obviously, because one dirham then was about nine rupees. So I said, why not? And I came to Dubai. I was looking for a job with the travel agents, airlines or travel agencies, but airlines, as I said, was not doing much of recruitment, more so in the Middle East because they were very close to the, the war area. Finally, I managed to get a job with one of the travel agencies. It was not the best, but I said, let's take it up. I did that and as probably luck would have it, I also got an offer from a bank. I'd given an interview and they said, hey, can you join? The difference in salary was 500 dirhams, but that meant a lot at the point in time. 
So I worked half a day with the travel agency and I told them, listen, I'm very sorry. I don't think I'll be able to continue because I've got another offer. They were mad with me, but I was happy with 500 drums more in my pocket with my family to join me very soon. So there I was working for a retail bank and I was wondering what the hell am I doing? I don't know. 500 drums was on one side, but retail banking and airlines, I mean, they're two different things altogether. But when you're on the deep end, when you're gonna be drowning, you have to hit your hands and legs and you have to swim. And that's exactly what happened. Three months down the line, four months down the line, I learned the ropes and I thought, yes, I have understood what is retail banking was handling auto loans at that point in time. I was there for a good uh, six years doing that. They were not even willing to take me to corporate sales because I was holding the fort in the, in the car loan section area. I put my papers for Australia and I went to Australia, 1998, 99. And within a matter of three months, I went in July, August, and in by October, I managed to crack a job as the people in Australia told me, wow, you cracked a job. I said, yeah, I cracked a job if you say so. And this was for a division of TNT Australia. The company was called Comet and Quick as Air. They handle interstate careers and they wanted somebody on internal sales where you are taking calls, handling customers for an inquiry that comes in, you go to calculate the charges with weight, volume, distance, speed, everything put together and put a quote to them as to how much it would be and try and see if you can register and book their career. So it was not easy, it was pretty difficult. And I had moved out from the airline industry to retail banking and now to courier services. Once again on the deep end, once again, I was out there trying to swim. And I did that. We were just three of us handling internal sales. And there were about 15 other people out there who were taking in the reservation for the couriers. That was the time when Having worked in Air Canada, it was okay for me, but the family found it to be a culture shock. You know, you might even have questions later on, but when your daughter is just seven years of age and you've gone totally into a different environment, I'm fine with it because I worked with the Canadians and in that kind of a atmosphere. But the child is with you for let's say four hours in a day, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. But eight hours, she's with a peer group. She's with, in the school children with others who are Aussies and Chinese and everybody else. And she came up with so many questions which were like in tangent or in contrast to what we had come up with from an Indian culture. There was a lot of contemplation, there was arguments, there were discussions, are we doing the right thing? We're so far away from home, etc. And finally I said, it's a question of we went, we saw, we didn't wish to conquer. My wife had her job going back in Dubai because she was uh, in school teaching French. So I said, okay, I'm happy anyway. And we came back to Dubai and it was almost five months and I was gonna tell them, listen, you will stay in Dubai, I'm heading back to Sydney because I still had a job going there, though I had resigned. And that's when somebody whom I knew said, okay, there's a position with uh, Kone elevators and escalators, but this is not a customer service job. It's a collections and credit management. Since you work for Air Canada, since you work for Comet, since you work for retail banking, you have some idea about these kind of things. What, what do you say? You're holding the wrong end of the stick because you're not going to be serving your customers there, but then you're going to be handling your customers for collection and stuff. Once again, I was thrown on the deep end, 
did I have a choice? The family was in Dubai. They wished to be in Dubai. And I would have gone back to Australia, but then it would have been some kind of a short term separation for a while. And then how it's going to be after three, five years is anybody's guess. And I felt, was I so desperate to migrate? Having born and brought up in India, am I not social enough as much as the Aussies were? And we thought to ourselves, what are we trying to do? A child who's growing up and the foundations of that, uh, and we are uprooting from there, taking her to a Western culture, and how it would turn out as they guess coming back to Dubai. I said, okay. And I took up the job with uh, Coney Elevators. And I was with them for a good 15 years, 17 years. And that's when I felt enough was enough. I was in a corner. I was wondering, where am I heading? Today, you guys are in HR. You will wonder, somebody started with the travel agencies, worked for an airline, moved into retail banking, and then to a courier services, and then he's working for an escalator company. One of the questions you might probably ask me is, what's your strength? Or what have you been doing? You know, how, how can we find a commonality between all these places you've been? And I asked this question to myself. I said, what is it that I find common between... Uh, all these organizations and what's my personal belief. At this point in time, I want to take a very quick 10 second break and I want to ask anybody opening there, what do you think was common between all these organizations? Anybody, make a guess. You can't be wrong, you cannot be right, you're fine. Everything is fine. Hello, is there anybody out there? I would I would say that it would be a, a survival uh, the what is we can survival of the fittest or we can say the, the the hunger for survival or maybe the passion. Okay, I didn't have a choice. I had to survive or drown. Yeah, and and today I'm drowning with the family, not a, not alone. Yes, to an extent. But there was something else common. Anybody else? Very quickly, five minutes, ten, five seconds, ten seconds. We have a comment from Prasad. Commitment to customers. Yes, go facing, ahead. Commitment to customers and facing challenges. Commitment to customers and facing challenges. Yes. Who is that? Prasad. Prasad. Prasad, yes. What I did find common in all these were just one thing everywhere, everybody, every industry had, every country had a customer. And that's when I thought, what is common between these customers? I went back to my Canada days when I was working there, I was happy, I was doing my bit. And I came to retail banking, what's common between these two? I moved to Australia, people and culture were different. Product was different, what I'm handling. Again, what was common. And then I came back to the elevator industry. So I did a lot of introspection on the whole thing. And I found that the only thing common was customers. I did a lot of research on that. And I tried to write some articles on customer service. I did some articles, but I did not dare show it to anybody. I just had it with me. And then one fine day, I showed it to my wife. Uh, she didn't know what I was up to. She said, okay, you've done it. I don't know what to say. It's fine. Okay, good. It didn't help me much. And fortunately for me, my sister who helped me to go to Dubai, she had a good friend. She was a child psychologist. She used to write for Friday magazine. And her name is Onita Nakra. I think she still lives in Dubai. And she said, these are not bad. Ask him to go and knock on the newspapers. Let's see what happens. And somewhere inside me, I had that little bit of a, a salesman uh, gene. And I knocked on the on Gulf News. And I had, why I said salesman is because I'm very persuasive. I wouldn't give up so easily. 
It took me six months and they got fed up with me. And they asked me, what exactly do you want? I said, I don't need nothing. Just print my article. I wanted to know if this article was worth the print or the dustbin. And so on 19th of May, 2003, my first article was printed in Gulf News. And that's the image that you see of the newspaper. Something I'll, I'll hold very fond and dear to my heart. 19th May 2003 was my first article and after that I didn't look back. I just realized that as I was writing articles on customer service, it was not tiring me, it was, it was not uh, taxing me, it was energizing me. And as I went about with it, I started buying more books on customer service. I was re reading, learning from the gurus in the, in the field, doing my own contemplation. So after that, I was wrote for Gulf News for a good whole year. I moved on to writing for Collegiate Times. Then I did a stint for uh, Dubai Quality Group's uh, Business Quality Review. Simultaneously, I was writing for the Weekend Magazine because Collegiate Times and Gulf News were writing for the business section. Weekend Magazine was something which everybody reads. When you're looking at business section, there are a few who will see that. There are a few who read the sports column, but a Weekend Magazine, everybody does. So I spoke, spoke to Collegiate Times, and I had the sweetest editor and he said, let's go ahead and do it for Weekend Magazine. And later I was write for uh, Customer Experience Magazine as well. So this was a fun time that I had. And with all these articles, there were probably about more than 60, 70 articles on various aspects, various angles of customer service. There was a friend of mine who said, listen, enough of your writing articles and stuff, let's start your own website. He used to work for Etisalat. And he helped me to get my website called delightingcustomers.com. First few years, there was nothing in the website, literally four pages was just there. I don't even know what to do. I'm not tech savvy. I really did not know how to handle it. But then over a period of time, I learned some things. He helped me and it evolved. So we started delightingcustomers.com. Now this is getting to be a, friend, a fever for me. And I was getting some encouragement, I was getting some support. And I thought, I just went ahead with it. In time to come, I started with, I came up with a theory of service excellence. It's called services a pact. It's basically covering things like what kind of a process you have in your organization. What's the attitude of your people? How well you communicate. And what's the on-time performance? I thought these were the four pillars holding service in place. I spoke to quite a few people about this. Am I making a fool of myself? Are there any gaps in this? You know, is there any loopholes that I need to see once again? That was the time I, though I was writing for the newspaper, somebody said, why don't you join Toastmasters? I said, writing is one ball game. Speaking about it is another ball game. Let's join Toastmasters. And I started Toastmaster. And one of the Toastmaster friends, Manjit Chabria, he said, why don't you come to my office and address your services at that? So I remember it was during one of the Ramadan uh, iftar uh, times. We reached there on five o'clock. We had the presentation and then we had the iftar uh, bites. And he suggested, listen, why don't we get copyrights for this? It's so nice. We can put it up in our office, maybe with your name and stuff. So he, he put that, that was the thought in my head. I said, okay, let's do it. And I once again, relentlessly followed up with the Dubai Ministry of Economy and Culture and managed to get a copyright for it from UAE. So it's basically, if you have a good process, you're meeting your customer's expectations. If you have a good attitude, you pleasantly surprise your customer. With good communication, you keep them well informed. And if you have a on-time performance, you satisfy your customer. And if your pact is in place, you keep your side of the pact, customer will keep his side of the pact. You take care of him, he'll come back to you. So that's how the whole thing evolved. What's the time like now? Oh, it's eight o'clock. 
From there, I moved on and I was making notes on various aspects of customer service. I had about 300 one-liners on customer service and a friend said, why don't we make a book of one-liners? Somebody suggested, let's do a book with illustrations. And finally, I was saying yes to everything. And finally I sat down and it took us three years to come up with a book called Delighting Customers This. Now this is an illustrative business book, very unique, one of its kind where every page has a picture on customer service. The idea was every a picture speaks a thousand words. So you learn from there. So I'm just going to do a very quick run from what you see here as a bouquet. It's more like delighting customers is giving him a genuine smile, which is no rocket science, but nevertheless, often than not, we don't see a customer service agent giving you a pleasant, genuine smile. Or delighting customers is giving employees a pat on the back at every instance possible. Do you find your supervisors, your team leaders, your bosses motivating you? That's important. That's where the, 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 it starts from there as much. Or for that matter, back office, HR, accounts, IT, supporting the frontline services. Without their support, where are you going to, how are you going to manage your jam or sandwich between the customer on one side you're trying to pacify him and the back end is not giving you the sufficient support. So you require that. So it's like back office extending support to frontline. Or it's an effort not by the frontline, not by a particular department, but from everybody in the organization, from the chairman all the way down to the chairwoman. Each one needs to say that I'm the ambassador for the company. I don't work for HR or I don't do the cleaning in the office or I don't run the company. You have to be the ambassador for the company. So we came out with this book and yes, it's been on, it's been in the shelves. We even evolved from there and we made it in the form of a tabletop tent where you keep it in front of your table and you keep flipping a page every day. So what I call as a silent one-to-one -one coach. From there, I've opened to more of training since I was reading, I was learning from the gurus. I read the books, I did the research and so many other things. I moved into training and coaching in customer service. And there, there are a whole lot of stuff. I know there are plenty to read. You can't read. I don't want you to read. It has to do more to do with uh, what you have the kindergarten students to have, show and tell. So we had the book as a, as a tool for showing every picture and what it means in customer service and exchanging notes from organizations or from the participants or to do with the key aspects of uh, customer service, which is seven modules, telephone manners, building a service culture, employee engagement, sales, public speaking, presentation skills, and it went on. I even started what is called a My PSR program. This again, thanks to Toastmasters, and the initiative I had that I learned so much from society, it's time I give back to society. So with Toastmasters, I did a pilot project where if companies can have a corporate social responsibility, why should I not have a personal social responsibility? There are lots of organizations in Dubai where there are four employees, five employees, and the owners don't send them for trainings. They may not be able to afford at their own cost to go for trainings costing 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 dirhams. So I said, let's do a free training for whatever little knowledge I had and share it with them. And Smart Life was very sweet. They had their project managers, people who are delivery boys, credit cards, working for the bank or the peon and stuff. So they were the project managers handling various projects for Smart Life. They said, can you train them? And I do trainings in English and Hindi. So we had over seven Fridays, the seven modules of customer service done in English and Hindi, and they got a certificate in return. So I thought now this is gonna be a lifetime activity for me to give back to society what I got from it. And I also encourage each and every one of you to do that if you can just spare three hours, four hours in an entire week. So it's been pretty fulfilling. Now, Coming down to the topic itself, I know I've gone through a, a story of my life, but then that tells me I had 
enough enemies. If I see it as enemies at that point in time, they were all enemies for me. Oh my God, why is it happening to me? My daughter was born, airlines closed down. After all the struggle, I got a job with an airline, I worked for travel agencies. Now it's the retail banking in the Middle East. Then I was thrown to Australia, came back to the elevators. All of them were enemies to me. They all had the Satan and the horns. They were all trying to intimidate me. But I thought they were not intimidating me. I had moved to a corner, yes, but I didn't allow that to happen. I said, were they my enemies or were they my challenges? Back to you, 20 seconds. Were they my enemies or were they my challenges? Challenges. Challenges, yeah. Today, I think they were my challenges. But that point in time, I, it looked like enemies to me. Because everything, every force was against kind of a thing. You know, all over the place and I still don't know what's happening. Today, I'd say they were challenges because I saw the enemy and I tried to confront it. And I tried to make friends with it. And I tried to see how we can overcome and take it together. And so who was the sole enemy stopping me from my progress if ever it was doing so? There's only one enemy that does that. And that's with each and every one of us. We carry it in our hearts. We carry it in our back. We carry it in our heads. And Nobody this knows. enemy is the one you look at in the mirror every morning. You can be your own enemy. You can be your own friend. You with yourself can surmount any challenge that comes your way. Just a matter of how you do it. What's the path you take towards it? How do you react towards that? How do you get over it? Do you knock, knock? Hopefully doors will open. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> like when I started my articles in 1920, did I realize I'm gonna publish a book? No, I did not, but doors opened. That's when I went from strength to strength. Similarly, we all have our enemies in the garb of challenges coming and we don't realize are they an enemy or a challenge. Depends how you see it, <clears throat> meet it and get over it. It says <clears throat> your worst enemy cannot harm you as much as your own unguarded thoughts. What do we mean by unguarded thoughts? Thoughts that we allow to penetrate and enter our conscious thinking mind. Thoughts <clears throat> in which we are happy to sweat. Thoughts in which we love to get stressed. These are thoughts come easily onto you and come to embrace you. And you do get embraced and you do embrace those thoughts more than the ones which has to be positive. Or you want to say, I'm going to fight this. And you have to say, I'll do it. Then some force will probably help you. You cannot just sit and say, pray to the God and it will happen. You may be too damn lucky for that. It may may not happen. Some of your own enemies, your unguarded thoughts, primarily negative thoughts. Each and every one is having loads and loads of negative thoughts. Man or woman, they always feel they are fat and overweight. I don't look good. How many of you want to take selfies? How many of you don't want to take selfies? or always envy somebody else. Because the river, the, the river is always greener on the other side than your own. How many ever times you tell, oh, you look good and it's modesty or foolishness to say, oh, no, 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 I put on weight kind of stuff. Tell me, right? Am I right or am I wrong? 
can give me a thumbs up. This is generally the human reaction. Ten percent right. Thank you, Sudha. <laughs> we are always thinking that oh, it's not true. Oh, it's not this. Oh, it's not that. And the world is telling you a lie. Oh, you would like to be this way. No. This is the primary thing where you got to break and get out from. And then you have fear, 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 which is killing everybody today. What are the fears? Will I fail? What are the fears? Fear of the world around you. What's each and every one of you going to think about me when I'm talking like this today? There are sixteen of you. Sorry, sixteen or eighteen? Sixteen. What will you think about me? Kind of a stuff. You know, when I started writing in the newspapers, I used to always think, "Oh my God, am I talking sense? Is somebody going to come and be very critical and tell me you're talking, you're writing a lot of rubbish in the newspaper? Please stop it." <clears throat> But that didn't happen. A few of them wrote some very good uh, feedback, and one of them also said he was one of the school uh, headmasters. He said, "Ganga, that you are writing more from your heart than your head," and he added on saying, "Keep it up." So I said, "Yeah, I am doing something. I am a little afraid how the world will judge me, but let's accept one thing. That's what my enemy told me, and my good son said." You cannot keep the hundred percent people happy. There are people who are going to like you. There are many who might not. So keep an open mind and go ahead with what you think is right and what you must do. The people are going to judge you. You're going to come to through an embarrassment. There are people who are going to reject. You have fear of expressing your true feelings. I've read n number of books, but what I read is mine. What I'm talking is mine. What I feel, I tell you. I don't have to give you cliches just to look good. I have to get my message across to you, and you need to understand what I'm trying to say. That's more important for me. Not quotes and quotes, though I might probably throw a few. Fear to ask people. I need to know. I do not know how many times we are in a group, and they say any questions, and there are fifty people, and you're afraid. Think fifty times to put your hand up and ask a question. It could be silly. It could be genuine. It could be intelligent. It could be anything. We always think so many times before we do that. Oh my God! I'm going to talk talking to the top of my hat. I'm going to make a fool of myself. You know, the forty-nine people are going to say, "What an idiot this person is." Excuse me, you're not an idiot. You have a question that's genuine for you, and that's it. So fear is one of the most key enemies that's going to stop you from doing so many things in your life. So these are all the unguarded thoughts which come to you, and there's no way you don't even know when it's creeping in. It's crept in. Just before I started this session, my slide share screen size something went off, and all the images were here and there. But experience has now taught me that Toastmasters has taught me that be calm, we'll manage the slides. And I have the courage to tell you that I made a boo boo, but I got over it. Mm -hmm. It happened. That's it. What to do? Okay, so these are some of your enemies. There are plenty more to the each individual that's here. Introspect, think, guard yourself from it. That's so very important. Don't let them creep in and give you sleepless nights. How to win over your own enemies? It's good to say we have the enemies, but how are we going to win them over? There has to be some methodology of doing these things. There's some way to get your presence of mind. Shift your attitude. Get into positive thinking. As much as you say, "Oh, I don't look well. I'm nice. I'm fat. I'm overweight." No, tell I'm fine. Somebody says you look great. Thank you very much. I'm so happy. I'm good. I love myself. There's no one like me. There can never be no one anybody like you. You are a limited edition. 
take that in your mind put that ingrain that in your intellect you know something very strange when i do my yoga one of the yoga exercises i've been learning or i learned was you widen your arms right real wide and then you bend them together and flush it's a yoga exercise but i said this is an exercise when i say i love myself and you go out also to the world that's around you start with that start with the thanks thanks for be happy with even today my birthday just went last week and i told people hey i'm looking for gifts and why not i do get excited when i get gifts whether you're four year old or 40 year old doesn't matter be honest to yourself be far have fun in life be don't let these fears or oh, what will people think about me no challenge your fears few of them breathe calm think calm my dad used to always say 99% of your worries will never 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 materialize if it does we shall see it at that time and that's true that's knowledge speaking experience will tell you the same thing because there's some force which is always there taking care of you trust visualize positive outcomes self talk if you don't do that you'll start going in not come out practice the attitude of so what we'll see have a contingency have a plan b be ready write your fears confront your fears don't put it for tomorrow it'll come to haunt you you have have one more sleepless night tonight practice on breaking the fear habit self motivate pat yourself on the back your boss may not do it so what distract yourself when these fears are trying to get back and creep into your uh, subconscious and your conscious mind believe in yourself and how do you believe like i said i thought customer service was a great thing then i started reading i started contemplating i came up with my theory self conviction then i felt that some people will laugh at you some people will reject you some people will like you that's the way it is look at a noble cause this my psr i said my personal social responsibility was a noble cause and i feel i'm happy doing that spending 3 hours 4 hours on a sunday in india or it is on a friday in uh, dubai you'll feel good about yourself nobody has to tell you that you feel good when you can help somebody practice to speak in front of the public you get over fear of speaking you won't mind raising your hand and say i have a doubt i have a clarification i have a feedback i need to know something more when you do that speak in front of people you get break the fear of talking in front of people that automatically get your confidence take action instead of feeling paralyzed just start with something just do it and see how it moves if i had not my article had not come on 19th of may 2003 i would not be here talking to you if i had not taken the courage to do these things i would not be here in front of you if i had not joined those masters i wouldn't be speaking to you i don't know how to run a webinar i'm trying to do it i'm learning and that's it you do it i can make mistakes you can make mistakes so what do it try look up at your role models that's something very 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 important i would say it could be your peers it could be somebody at home it could be a child it could be a national leader it could be a philosopher it could be buddha or anybody spiritual emotional intelligent management guru whatever i just have a few to throw and you can have a look one of the persons who says if you can dream it you can do it what a fabulous statement that is and he did it world was against it was not easy for him to do that and today he is a household name i think in every house in the world irrespective of the language every adult and every child knows who Walt Disney is because he said if you can dream it you can do it he didn't allow the enemy to come in and spoil his dream the enemy was there even in his intellect but he didn't let it come in and spoil his dream 
because he had something more overpowering with him that he wanted to take forward and he's convinced about something and he says, I'm going to look there and not get distracted with these enemies who want to pull me down. This is a lady that we all know. People will always look at you the way you look at yourself. <clears throat> She's an Arjuna Award winner and more than Paralympic champion. I look upon, I read about her and it's pretty encouraging. The challenge in our lives are there to strengthen our convictions. They are not there to run us over. How many of you have heard of Nick? I'm sure you'll have seen a WhatsApp or if I said something. He's a perfect example of there's nothing that will stop me from doing what I want to do. And he's one of the highly paid motivational speakers in the world today. Highly respected motivational speakers in the world today. And for those of you who might still be wondering, he does not have arms or legs. He was born without them. But he's a good swimmer. He's a motivational speaker. He is married with two children. So if he can do it, what are we testing here? I'm sure we can. We need to help ourselves. That's self-help. Nobody else is going to help you. Alice in Wonderland, this is impossible. The Mad Hatter said, only if you believe it is impossible. Otherwise, it is possible. Or as a parting thought, our thoughts have incredible life-changing power. Make some of your own words. Worst enemy is not living. Sorry, I'm just I'm not able to read. I've got a screen in front of me here. Yes. Make sure your own worst enemy is not living between your own two ears. You can be your worst enemy or you can be your greatest friend to yourself. Think about it. When you're pointing a finger at the world, there are three fingers back at you. So I think we need to do a lot of introspection and say, hey, where am I going wrong? What am I doing wrong? What can I do better? Seek help from friends. Seek help from people who are more experienced. See what you can do. Innovate. Be creative. Think out of the box. Let few people laugh. It's okay. In the end, if you succeed, you will have the last laugh. That's very important. Otherwise, you have at least tried and lost rather than not trying at all. Think about it. I think that's very, very important, which life has taught me. And I feel the worst enemy is within you. And, uh, okay, that's my UAE visiting card. The number has changed. If anybody wants, you can send me a mail at gangadhradelightingcustomers.com. I'll give you my India number. If you dial that number, it's disconnected. The PO box also is not there, obviously. So it's just for your information. And I want to thank each and every one of you who have been patiently listening to my two bits of knowledge. And if you have any questions, any questions ever that I could uh, address now, any questions that I might not know and we can brainstorm, any questions that I can come back to you with, please feel free to ask me now or even later. The floor is open. Thank you so much, Gangada, sir. Uh, it was a great session. Uh, in fact, we now know who is our real enemy after the session. So I was expecting somebody else to come as an enemy, but it's now clear that uh, we are our own enemy. Uh, fear, again, it's a great uh, uh, light to have uh, show, show. It's like uh, fear is one of the greatest enemy which we are having in us. And uh, again, stepping out of the comfort zone, Again, it's also one of the enemies which is there. 
thanks a lot for this uh, session gangadhar sir uh, the floor is open to uh, questions uh, anybody can start uh, anil if you are live there yeah you can start with the questions it's been my pleasure anybody wants to ask hi sir yeah ah jason i was here i'm yes. sorry actually kids are around holiday mood and they are watching movies and i'm sitting <laughs> with my earbuds <laughs> so i prefer okay. to be silent so i will limit to a few <coughs> words first of all people who don't know who is mr gangadhar let me tell that he is my mentor he is my guide and he is my helping hand in the crisis because our journey started in 2018 when i started to when i decided to become a toastmaster that is where our paths crossed and since that moment i knew him i know him and i i i actually second him in every thought or every statement that he makes because there is a logic attached to it there is some experience attached to it so that is my confidence when i brought him to this meeting so i really don't have any questions for this session because uh, we have been in regular touch this is not just a session limited question that i have whatever whenever i need support he is always always there for me so i will i, I will leave it to the forum because we have almost 12 plus members here so they may get little more guidance than me so over to you sir thank you thank you very much the floor is open shankar mr shankar was uh, there do you want to speak on something or oh, mr ganeshan hello gangadhar thank you very much for your uh, wonderful presentation you will be here uh, jason my pleasure yes i i can hear you okay sorry i'm in a mask in the walking <laughs> okay uh, i just want to ask you one thing gangadhar uh, the yeah. wonderful points what you put down is very clear that if everybody believes in themselves and get the fears out of it and they, they can definitely succeed but uh, when something is going against you there is always the instinct that people try to put the blame on somebody else not our own not oneself it is just the environment just the others who are against you right so how do you suggest that people come out of this reactive mode to a proactive to accept that what is something wrong with them and then uh, try to find a solution uh actually it's not very easy to do that in the <coughs> initial encounters because when you think that somebody is so good and is going to be so helpful he probably could stab you on the back also but <clears throat> the way i see it is over two or three encounters or even earlier you can you can see if this person is genuine in what he is telling you is he genuine in his commitments how genuine is his body language does it match his words and thoughts and tone of speaking and that should always that generally gives a sixth sense to a person saying i can trust this person or maybe i cannot trust this person and when you feel you can trust this person then you go ahead with that but if you tread calmly if you tread slowly if you tread a little bit carefully till you're more convinced like let's take a simple example of a relation between you and me there was so much of trust that happened that that's why you sponsored my uh, stay in dubai am i right yes absolutely and was there any reason that we had to have any unpleasantness between us none at all nothing on the other contrary you would have so much of the business associates because i know this times are not the best in dubai including employees so over a period of time you would know how much i can trust or how much should i go ahead with and conduct business 
so it's a question of you're, you're feeling your way around and treading very carefully at the initial times till you are very sure that you can have trust in this person embrace this person or you know be wholeheartedly going along with him it has to be a very, very careful very, very careful manner of doing it and at times you may have to even protect yourself contractually thank you thank you guys so i i mean i would say yes start off with total trust but be careful when you're trading so that's that's one of the ways to do it thank you the most welcome the floor is open for anybody else uh, miss nitya would you like yes, to speak yeah the building mr gangadhar i remember meeting you in smart life once and this is the first session i am attending thank you very much it's a very inspiring talk and very relevant to the time because especially during covid like you know we keep uh, blaming the external forces for not achieving what we want to achieve uh, but then you made us realize that you know the enemy is within and just by changing our thought process we can you know march forward with a positive uh, towards positivity of course there are obstacles here and there but how you overcome that that is the solution you have given uh, so thank you very much i just want to know out of curiosity you are based in dubai or in uh, india now Uh, hello nitya i think he is disconnected okay. but okay. he had been living in dubai for so many years i think it's more than uh, two decades okay and recently in the month of august or september he relocated back to bangalore okay uh, for something good to okay. he's talking to us from uh, bangalore now yes he is based in bangalore okay. now okay okay great great all right If you have any questions, feel free to put it put it to us. We'll sure. get it clarified for you. No problem. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, anybody, if any, if you have any questions, you can directly put it in uh, email. Already he has shared the email ID. I will uh, put that in the chat box so that everybody can uh, check out the email ID. Anil, would you like to uh, close? the session i was i was actually thinking whether he is going to reconnect i'm not sure because 